On this episode of TQA Weekly, learn more about your system memory and your graphics card. My name is T Smith, this is TQA Weekly, and if ever you have any questions, comments, suggestions for other topics I can do, you can always email me at ask at tqaweekly.com. Go to my website, tqaweekly.com, where you can go to the subscribe section, find different ways of subscribing to me, following me on social networks, go to the contact section where you can actually email me directly from the site, interact with others on each of the past episodes I have already done, or click the support us link where you can actually help me out with this show. And of course, if you're already on YouTube, blip.tv or Vimeo, you can always leave your comments down below. Can anyone guess what the most common question asked to me is, especially in the last six months? Well, I'm gonna tell you. It's, does my GDDR5 graphics card work on my system that only has DDR3 memory? So first of all, we get two different kinds of RAM. We get our VRAM, which is video RAM, and our DRAM, which is the system RAM connected to your DIMM or SODIMM slot. RAM itself refers to random access memory. The V is video, the D is dynamic. Dynamic RAM usually connects into your DIMM or SODIMM slot onto your main board used by the processor to store information while it is executing a bunch of commands. It is extremely volatile, can barely keep a charge due to the many billions of capacitors and transistors on board. If you turned off your system, everything would be instantly lost and half, if it has to have anything stored in RAM, it has to be constantly refreshed in order to stay there. So this is your DRAM. Your graphics card though, especially those with the PCI Express bus, use DDR3 memory, especially all the latest cards, for quite a few generations in order to actually allow the graphics card to have its own video RAM. A graphics card is nothing more than a computer within a computer, where your normal RAM will actually interface with only one bus, your graphics card interacts on two different sets of connectors. So it connects to your monitors as well as to the main board, which means information is being collected from the CPU, the system RAM, and storage media sent to your graphics card processed in strict order with the help of shift registers, which by the way, allows for all of the information to be processed in order to generate the pixels on your screen in order before terminating the frame itself. And it shifts all of that information once the image is processed over to your monitor, which has its own processors to generate the image given out by the graphics card on its specific screen. For screens that are HDCP compliant, it has bi-directional interactions with each other, allowing it to know that the screen is high definition content protected. So yes, the graphics card is literally a computer within a computer. It is for this specific reason that when I tell you that it does not matter whether your system has DDR2 DDR3 or DD4 memory. It does not matter what kind of PCI Express graphics card you plug in, vice or versa, either direction. Whether it has older memory or newer memory, whether it be DDR3, DDR4, DDR5, well, GDDR4, GDR5 memory on the graphics card, it's basically all the same thing. It is random access memory with billions of transistors and capacitors, barely capable of keeping information, constantly refreshed with the primary difference between your system memory being accessed randomly and the memory from your VRAM being shoved through a shift register in order so that your computer can have an image done correctly. So I hope that answers your question for everybody. There is no difference. It doesn't matter. It will always work. So if you learned anything from this and you liked the episode, click like, otherwise click dislike. Leave me your comments, questions, and suggestions for topics down below. And of course, if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe to my show.
Thank you for watching and have a great day.